Hi friends, welcome. I'm Andy Lee and this is the Bite of Bread. It's a weekly nourishment for your soul. Come on in, grab your hot coffee or tea, decaf of course. It's getting late. Hope you have on your stretch pants. I know we've all had long days, but come join me. Stay with me this week, this week, this week, tonight, as we study forgiveness. Hi, Stephanie. Good to see you. Actually, we're not studying forgiveness, but we're going to be studying the key ingredient that can help us forgive. And stick with me because I'm going to share with you three things I've learned, three steps I've learned to take that help me in the forgiveness department. So I'm so glad you could join me. Hey, Jane. Good to see you tonight. You guys like my cup. It says me out. I am a kitty cat fan. I have one somewhere around here. I think he's already gone to bed. Like he doesn't sleep all day long. What is that? Anyway, hold my hands. I'm going to pray us up as people get on with us. Thank you, Lord, so much for this day. Thank you for getting us through halfway the week. And I pray that tonight will be encouraging. I pray that it will be that that um, just nourishment, spiritual nourishment to get us through strong and thriving and, and victorious and not just surviving through the week. God, I pray for those who might have just this hard time forgiving somebody. There's somebody in their life, maybe many bodies in their life, that it's just really hard to forgive. Lord, we can't do it without your supernatural help. And so, God, I pray that you speak through me tonight, speak through your word, and we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. There's Amanda Schrader and Randy and Kai, if you're watching. Tina Hunt, good to see you. Good to see y'all. Come on in. So tonight we're talking about forgiveness. And before I get started, I wanted to um, welcome you to my website, wordsbyandylee.com. You can get the Body Bread Reading Plan, which I would have right now with me printed off, but my printer decided not to work tonight. Do you ever have that? It won't work tomorrow morning, I'm sure. But so tonight we're going to be talking about practical tips on forgiveness. You know, we can't forgive without the supernatural power of Jesus. Can I get an amen? Anybody, anybody out there who's experienced that or you're struggling with forgiving somebody? So tonight we're going to be talking about this ingredient called grace. In fact, I think for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about grace because grace covers, there's just so many different aspects of grace and it's just such an important topic and such an important pillar of our faith and what we believe and what changes us. So we'll be talking about that for several weeks, but tonight we're going to talk about how grace can help us forgive those who have really hurt us. They can It can help us in relationship. So one of these scriptures in the Body Bread reading plan this week and I think it's for tomorrow, is Hebrews 4.16. So if you have your Bible, go with me to Hebrews 4.16. Hi, Deb Warren and Diane Cunningham. Good to see you all tonight. Hebrews 4.16 says, let me find it. Okay, Hebrews 4.16, do you have it? It says, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. I'm going to read that one more time. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. Everybody say confidence. So that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Hi, Lori. You know... It is a time of need that we need this grace and we need to go to the throne and we need this mercy when we are we are dealing with the unforgiveness, right? That is a time of need when we really need 
help. We need the Lord's help. I just want to share with you a little bit. If you read my article, you read some of this, but a few years ago, I had this situation of unforgiveness. Someone had sent me an email that had just cut to the core. Um, it hurt. I didn't know how to respond. I knew how I wanted to respond. Hi, Erin. Good to see you, my friend. I knew how I wanted to respond. I wanted to respond with venom. I wanted to respond just getting them back for the way they had hurt me. And see, it wasn't just this one email. This email had a lot of history with it. There was just a lot of history and a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. And I knew one thing that stopped me from emailing right away was I knew that in the past, I had responded in ways to this person that were hurtful and that I thought were good at the time, but then I, I realized that they really were painful and it really wasn't good. And I didn't want to do that. I did not want to write or say anything that I would regret. Have you been there? Have you been in a place where somebody has hurt you, somebody has said something, and uh, you really want to say something back, but at the same time, you don't want to regret saying it. You know, we know we can't take back what we say. Once it's out there, it's like toothpaste. It's out there, and you can't get it back in. Oh, my God, I'll be able to redeem it and work on it. No, we already have enough problems already, right? So... I didn't respond, but I was hurt. In fact, I was so hurt that I turned off the computer and I went upstairs and Mike was working and I told him what happened and I just cried. I just cried and he was sweet and he gave me a hug and then he promised me he'd take me to go get a snow cone because, you know, nothing makes you feel better in the summertime when you've been hurt by somebody than a snow cone, right, and a hug. So we went to get a snow cone, and that worked for, you know, like an hour. I felt better, and then I was still um, just heavy with this hurt, this grief, and this anger and unforgiveness and, and not knowing what to do and how to respond. So th that was something in my time of need that I really needed help with. And I'm going to tell you the rest of that story in a minute. But I want us to go back to Hebrews 4.16 because I wanted to tell you about my time in need. And now we're going to go back to that scripture, Hebrews 4.16, about the time in need. Um, that time in need when we need to forgive in this instant. Let's look at the context. It's really important when you study scripture. Now we can read scripture and it can just speak to us, Holy Spirit can speak to us, and we can read it devotionally, but to really get the most out of the scripture, we really need to look at the context, and we need to understand what first what the author is saying to the people that the author was writing to, and then we can apply it to us. In the book of Hebrews, y'all, I, I just love this. I have to share it. They don't know who the author is, but there's a chance. There's a really good chance that the author of Hebrews was a woman named Priscilla. Now, they don't know that for sure, but there's a few um, theologians who think she could have been the author. And it's called Hebrews because the author of Hebrews was writing to the Jewish people, to the Hebrew people. So she is using... Um, analogy that they would understand and it's all based on the law and it's all based on the temple and, and their sacrifices and, and the way that was done and so she's explaining or he's explaining um, what Jesus has done how Jesus has become a high priest now in the temple we if you're familiar if you've done any Bible study you read the Bible, you know that in the Old Testament with the temple, um, they had sacrifices. They The priests would sacrifice on the altar. The, the blood was the atonement that there was a high priest that would go into. There were different areas of the temple. And there was a place called the Holy of Holies. And it was the farthest back in the temple. And only once a year did the high priest who had to do all this to purify himself, would go into the Holy of Holies to the presence of God just once a year. 
And in Hebrews 4.14, now she's, I'm not going to read the whole chapter 4, but she's talked about that Jesus has been the final sacrifice, that he has fulfilled the law. He has taken the punishment, our punishment. And in verse 14, it says, Therefore, since we have such a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way. He was a man. Not only was he God, he was a man. And so he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. But he gets us because he's been one of us. And so now our high priest, who's gone all the way to the throne, he's not just in that, that um, temple that was a pattern of what was to come. He has gone into the heavens. He has seat, seated right next to God at the throne. He's a high, our high priest who gets us, who understands what we struggle with and our temptations. And one of our temptations is unforgiveness. Yes? One of our temptations is wanting to get revenge and get somebody back after they've hurt us so badly. Right? But... We can take that unforgiveness, and we know that's not good for us because it just makes us bitter and angry, and there's just no good fruit that comes out of that anger and out of that bitterness and out of that unforgiveness. And so he says, or she, he or she, whoever wrote it, says, um, we have this high priest who did tempt in every way, just as we are yet without sin. And that brings us to verse 16. So that brings the context. So let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Oh, now let's do some digging. Let's start looking at some of these words. You know, it's one of my favorite things to do. I think it's when the Bible just comes to life. The word grace in the Greek, the word grace in the Greek is charis. And charis, the root word, and the root words are always very important. Hey, Drew and Tracy, I'm glad you're here with us tonight. The word grace is charis. It's a root means rejoice. The root means rejoice. And so charis itself, because of its root, and because what grace charis does, it brings joy. It, it means rejoice. It creates delight in the recipient, right? And, and sometimes we talk about, you know, we pray, we say grace at mealtime. Well, there's that thankfulness, that aspect of this word that means um, thankfulness and joy. Caris is a benefit. It's a favor. It's a gift. You know what the key is? If it's a gift, my friends, that means we can't earn it. We don't earn grace. It's a gift that's been given. It's acceptance. It's approval. It's generosity. It's open-heartedness. Now, this definition that I'm getting is from my keyword Bible. And for those of you who are just coming in new to, to my study, I always use the keyword. Can you see it? That the keyword Bible, it's um, from AMG Publishers. It's one of my favorite resources. In the back of it are dictionaries, Old Testament, New, Te New Testament dictionaries, where you can look up the Greek and the Hebrew and it's, it really helps. But So this is what he says. Um, this is what the definition says. It's a benefit, favor, gift. It means acceptance, approval, generosity, open-heartedness. It describes favors done without expectation of return. Now somebody tell me, somebody tell me, is that easy for us to have or do or be? And I would say, on our own as humans, no, it's a supernatural gift from the Holy Spirit. This, is, this grace is supernatural that we cannot muster. 
We cannot do on our own. We need Holy Spirit to help us. Holy Spirit to help us receive it as well as give it. So keep on, keep on here with me. So grace, caress, I love this open heartedness, um, acceptance, approval. Think about that when we think about forgiveness and unforgiveness, acceptance and approval. It says, I've got um, God, it's God given. When God gives this grace, it's unearned and it's unmerited favor. The only motive is the benevolence of the giver. The only motive of grace of this charis, especially as talking about God and his grace that he gives us, his only motive is the benevolence, the open heartedness, the, the generosity, the love, and the favor of the giver, expecting nothing in return. That is charis, that is grace, and we can go to that throne of Caris, that throne of grace, that throne of acceptance, that throne of approval, that throne of generosity, the throne of open hardness. Our heart, it's a hard word to say, open heartedness. We can go to that throne anytime, and especially in a time of need when we really need help forgiving somebody. So let me tell you the rest of my story. So I got that email that day and I was so upset and cried, had my snow cone. The next morning got up, upset, went for a walk, praying, 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 talking to God, talking to God. I'm ready to burn the bridge, Lord. Look at all that's happened. Look at all that's been done over and over and over. God, I've, I've extended forgiveness and helped and blah, 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 blah. I was so mad, but I knew better, God, it was probably God's grace to keep me from writing a response to that email. I waited, and I waited, and I don't remember how long I waited, but I think it might have been like a week that I waited, and I just kept on praying about it, just kept on praying, God, help me, show me how to respond back to this email. Um, show me, Lord, help me. So I just kept on praying. Then one morning, one morning, I woke up and those feeling, that feeling of anger and that feeling of unforgiveness just wasn't there. And I had this sentence in my mind of how to start the email, the response back to the one who had hurt me so much. And it was only going to be like two or three sentences, and it was so kind. I mean, it was just so simple and such kind words. And the secret of this, y'all, I was free. I was freed. I was freed to free that person and his decision that he had made. I was freed. And I wrote that email. And the rest of that day, really the rest of the journey, I have been freed of that bitterness and that unforgiveness that was just bearing on me. I was free, but it was not anything I did on my own. I could not have mustered that. I could not have made that happen. It was a supernatural gift from the Holy Spirit. I had gone to the throne of grace, that throne of Caris, and you know what I received? I received mercy. Let me tell you what that word mercy means in the Greek. It's elios. Hi, Donna and Kelly. Good to see you. It's elios um, in the Greek, and this is really cool. When I think of mercy, I my brain in the English definition goes straight to um, straight to not getting the punishment you deserve. And there is the other side of mercy, of, of being helpful, um, I think, in our language. But elios, the word elios, um, its definition is compassion. It's compassion. And not just compassion, not just the feeling, but action taken out of compassion for others to alleviate their misery. Let me say that again. 
Elios is action taken out of compassion for others to alleviate their misery. That is the meaning of Elios. That's the meaning of what we have translated as mercy. So let's go back to Hebrews 4.16 and read it known now. Let us then approach the throne of Caris, that throne of joy, that throne of favor with confidence so that we may receive Elios. We may receive that action that alleviates my misery. That, that compassionate action that alleviates my misery and helps me find grace, find that gener generous spirit, that favor, not expecting anything in return. Help me find that to help me in my time of need. Y'all, that's exactly what happened to me that day. That's exactly what God did. I had gone to the throne of grace. I went oh many, many, many times that week because I was so upset about it. I had gone to the throne of grace asking for help, and boom, he gave it to me. He alleviated my misery. I was no longer um, in the chains of unforgiveness. I was freed, and I was freed to pass that on, to pass on that grace, that favor, not expecting anything in return. I, I really did not expect anything. God has done great things in that relationship. Since then, he's done miraculous things that I could not have seen. And I'm so thankful that I did not burn that bridge. Because if I would have burned that bridge and I would have said those words that I really wanted to say, what would have happened a year from there, which I never could have imagined, um, it would have made things very different. In fact, the Lord has restored and is healing that relationship even today, it's getting better and better and better. He gave me that grace. It was supernatural. It was Holy Spirit. I couldn't do it myself. So, if you are stuck in unforgiveness, and you've got this bitterness, and you need to respond to somebody, and it's really hard, and you don't want to say something wrong, but you just, you need help. The three steps I want to give you tonight is... One, do not react right away. And this may be something, maybe, maybe I'm helping you ahead of time. Maybe you're going to walk into a situation tomorrow and you're really, really going to want to respond ugly. You really want to. But I'm going to, the first step I want to encourage you is don't react, wait. Just wait, wait. If when you're tempted to react ugly, um, to say something you might regret, just wait, even if it's in traffic, my friends, and somebody cuts you off and you really want to honk at them, just wait. Count to ten while you're in traffic before you do that. <laughs> or something worse. Um, but more seriously than that, if, if you've been offended by somebody, before you respond, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Um, respond rather than react. And it takes time to respond. You've got to wait. So number one, wait. Number two, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Go to that throne of grace. Go to the throne. I'm, I'm a firm believer in journaling. Journaling is awesome. I can write down my anger and I can write down my unforgiveness. And then I can say, help, please. I need your help, Lord. And I can shut it and I can put it on the table and give it to him. And I can write it down every day. I can walk through my neighborhood and I can pray and ask for help. I can go to the ocean because I live at the ocean and walk on the beach and pray and pray. So the first thing I want you to do if you have unforgiveness in your heart and you really want to respond ugly to somebody is wait. The second thing is to pray and go to prayer and keep on going. Keep on going to that throne of grace. Good to see you, Emily and Sam. Good to see you. And if Kathy's with you, good to see y'all tonight. Go to that throne of grace. Pray and pray and pray. Journal and pray. And then the third thing, my friends, is trust. <laughs> so you're going to have to wait. Don't say anything. You're going to have to pray. And then you're going to have to trust. Trust. 
Trust the Lord. Trust His timing. Trust Holy Spirit as you wait on Him. Can I just tell you, He is so faithful. Go with me to John 1, 14. This is our last scripture we're going to talk about tonight. Can you believe it? We're only talking about two scriptures tonight. But John 1, 14 um, was today's, I think, um, bite on the bite of bread. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go with me. I'm turning to John. John 1. John 1, 14. And in John 1, 14, John writes, The Word became flesh, and he made his dwelling among us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So that word grace is charis, that, that, that grace, that um, favor that is unmerited, unearned, that causes joy for the recipient. But also that word truth, yes, can mean truth, it's aletheia, but it also means faithfulness. So I love that. That Jesus, that the word, that the word, that he became flesh and he dwelled among us full of grace and faithfulness. And if I leave you with anything tonight, I want to leave you with the promise and the truth and the experience that I have experienced that He is faithful. And if you just keep on going back to that throne of grace, asking Him to give you the grace and the mercy you need to change your heart, to give you the right words, to give you the, you know, the, the right actions to know how to respond to a situation, that you keep on going there, He is faithful to change your heart, to give you the words, to give you the kindness, to give you this supernatural, crazy, nothing that you can do on your own grace to respond with the loving kindness to that person who's hurt you. I pray that encourages you tonight. Let me hold your hands and pray you up. Lord, thank you so much for this word. Your word is alive and active. And it heals us. It heals us. Lord, you do surgery with your word and you heal those places, those wounds. Father, I pray that tonight this, this word, this word, word of your grace and your faithfulness and the empowering of your Holy Spirit, the forgiveness that you just can give us, Lord, for people, that this truth will be fruitful that others will experience it and that it will grow and grow and grow and your kingdom will be seen and will be a city on a hill, a light that no one can hide. Lord, we praise you, we love you, we bless you, and we give you all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I pray that was encouraging to you, really gave you something tangible that you can hold on to. Go to my website, wordsbyindylee.com. You can read the article, um, the post, and get the, the reading plan. The reading plan is really simple. It's one scripture and then a prompt, so you can apply that scripture every day. Um, thank you for joining me. Go out there. Be a threat to the enemy as you walk in this grace and this favor of the Lord and that you share it with those around you. Finally, one more thing is I want to invite you, if you are in the Wilmington area, my sister Rena Schrader and I are about to have our, I think, is it our sixth Beauty for Ashes 2020? It's March 7 and 8 at Shell Island Resort on the beach. If you want to come to a retreat at the beach, a women's retreat, um, you can go to wordsbyindyling.com and go on the menu tab. You'll find the page. Also, we have a we have a page here on Facebook. I think it's uh, Beauty for Ashes, a women's retreat page. 
look there um registration is open we the theme this year is anointed that it is anointed and that's the theme so we would love to have you join us thank you so much for joining me tonight love you guys i'll see you next week i'll be here lord willing and we'll be talking some more we'll continue this conversation on grace have a great night bye